Amen. Put your hands together for those that are joining us live. Amen. Welcome, welcome to Faith Family Church. We're so glad you've joined us. I'm, I'm about to preach what could be one of the toughest sermons that I've ever preached, but also one of the most powerful messages that you could receive from God. So give an ear to hear to what God will say, and we believe it will bless your life. Amen. Anybody ready for this word? All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this another opportunity to meditate your word. Your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray that you'll shine the light of your word to us today by the Holy Spirit. Help us to see it. Help us to get it. Your word to us in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm concluding today a series that I started just four weeks ago, this being the fourth part. And this series has been based on two particular passages of Scripture. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. The Bible says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria unto the end of the earth. Now, this is not just the Bible saying this. This is Jesus saying this. And the you that he's referring to is not just those few disciples that were standing with him when he was about to ascend to the Father. But he's saying it to you and to me. He's saying that we will receive power. We sang about power today. We sang about the miracle working power of God. Incidentally, what's unique about this word power, it has a specific meaning in the Greek. For example, in the Greek, this word power comes from the word dunamis, D-U-N-A-M-I-S. Some people say dunamis. I don't know what is, how you say it. But the word means something very unique. It doesn't just mean like energy, like power, strength. This word dunamis literally means miracle working ability. Ooh, I like that. How many of y'all know God is a miracle worker? He really, really is. And if you were to look around today, maybe you would be a little bit skeptical to think that God still is a God of miracles today. I mean, we see the miracles of the Bible, but where are God's miracles today? Well, one of the reasons why we don't see the miracle working power of God today is because the miracle workers don't have the power. Because notice, he said, you will receive the ability to work miracles, signs, and wonders when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life. Amen. So when we see Moses being used by God to perform miracles, signs, and wonders, that miracle working power came through that man. When we see Jesus, who was anointed by the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, we see miracles happening through his life because of the miracle working power that was upon his life. Could it be that we don't see the kind of miracles that we do in the Bible because those who should have miracle working power, they don't have it? Why don't they have it? Because they haven't received the Holy Spirit In this way, he has yet to come upon them. And so they don't have the miracle working power. Uniquely. When you talk about a miracle, what are you talking about? The definition of miracle is a supernatural intervention into the ordinary course of things. Ordinarily, a cold, a common cold left unattended or resisted in the body could lead to death. The course of a cold can cause you to die. I mean, you name it, heart disease or lung disease or, you know, uh, literally just pain in your body. If it's left unchecked can cause death by course. In the same way, things that happen financially. If this goes in the way that it continues to go, then it will end up in calamity. What a miracle is, it's when it's supernaturally intervened by something. The ordinary course. Ordinarily, this would lead to a repossession, but supernaturally, something intervened, and now you're not in that position anymore. 
That's a miracle, a supernatural intervention into the ordinary course of things. So we're asking the question, have you received power since the Holy Spirit has come upon you? Well, last week I I preached a message that I call authority and power, and I knew when I started that I wasn't going to finish it. So I'm going to try to finish authority and power today. We learned in this particular message that there's two sides to this equation. There's authority and power, and there's a difference. For example, a police officer has the authority to tell you to stop the car, but he he doesn't have the power to stop the car. We stop because of his authority, not because of his power. Another way to look at it is we call them a sheriff's constable. And we learn that that means with stable. In other words, that officer is saying, I'm not in this by myself. There's a whole bunch of us that if you run over me, you won't get over all of us. We have enough power to stop you from doing wrong. Amen. So there is a difference between authority and power. In Acts chapter 19, we looked at a group of guys who took it upon themselves to use the name of Jesus to cast out devils. And they ended up being run out of the house, wounded and naked. That demon said, Paul, I know Jesus, I know, but who are you? They neither had the authority to use the name of Jesus, nor did they have the power to use his name. In the same chapter, in Acts chapter 19 and verse 11, at the beginning of this story, it points out that God worked unusual interruptions into the ordinary course of things by the hands of Paul. It was so unusual that they would take handkerchiefs or aprons from Paul's body and lay it upon, it would, they would take them to the sick and the people would be healed. And if there were any demon spirits in the person, they would flee just simply because of a cloth that came from Paul's body. That was an unusual intervention in the ordinary course of things. Notice that God was able to do that because of the power that was working in Paul. The question that is upon us today is, do you have that kind of power? Because you should receive power. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The second platform from which we preach this message is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Notice here he says, Paul says, but know this, this is something that all of us should know, that in the last days, perilous times will come. We just referenced in El Paso yesterday, uh, 20 some odd people's lives were taken by some, you know, ruthless guy to go in and to cause harm. Notice that 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 is a very... that gives indication that we are living in perilous times. Things are not going to get better as the years go on. They're actually going to get worse. But Jesus said, be of good comfort. I've overcome the world. He said, in the world, you're going to have tough times and bad things that happen. But you should not be worried. You should not be fearful. Why? Because I have overcome the world. So use my name in any situation or circumstance. You have that authority. Notice this. He says, but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. The reason why? Because men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. I don't know about you. I don't want to be in this list. The next verse says, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal. When you think about the brutality of what took place. On yesterday and in other places around the world, it's because we're living, we're living in that time. There's going to be despisers of good, traitors. They're going to be those that are headstrong, haughty. Those are going to be those that are lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Then the last, he said, they're going to be those that have a form of godliness, but deny its power. And from such people turn away. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in this list. But what's most outstanding about this particular list is that you might be in it. Not in those that are brutal and slanderers and backstabbers and those that, you know, are lovers of pleasures. I'm I'm sure you're here because you love God. 
But the Bible says that in this group and in this last day, there are going to be people that have a form of godliness, but they don't have the power. My question to you as I conclude this series is do you have the power that we're referring to? You have the very image and likeness of God. If you've been born again, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are literally now in God's likeness and in God's image. But do you lack the power? Do you not have this power that Jesus referred to? In John chapter 14, in John chapter 15, in John chapter 16, Jesus told us as his disciples That whatever we ask in his name, he would do it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. He said, ask and you should ask in my name. What If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. But yet we see so many that are using the name of Jesus, and it's almost this ineffectual. The reason why I've taken the time to preach this series is because of this reason. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, In verse number 12, it says here that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason why I'm preaching this series is so that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. In other words, by taking these couple of weeks and emphasizing these particular scriptures, it ought to be that you look for the opportunity to use the name of Jesus. Why? Because like Deputy Dog, you've been hereby deputized by Jesus. Come on, somebody, to use his name for whatever you need. If you're in a financial situation, and I sense in my heart, there are some here that are in a very tight place. We're at the beginning of the month. Maybe you've got a bill that's due. Maybe you're still not yet have paid your rent, or maybe something's outstanding, or maybe you've got a car note that's coming up, and you were just barely able to take care of this, and now you're hit with that, and then... Coming up in the middle of this month, you've got children that are going to school and you're looking for supplies and you're starting to feel that financial pressure. It ought to be that you're able to use the name of Jesus and command whatever money that you need to come to come. That you can command bills to be paid and they get paid. That you can command the devil to take his hand off of your money and the devil will obey you. But what I sense in my heart is we are deputized, but we don't have the power. We're like the seven sons of Sceva that are using the name of Jesus. And the devil is like, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. I even know Pastor Stan. That's a bad man. But who are you? And then cause you to, to, to experience, you know, different failures. You know, it shouldn't be that sickness and disease dominates the believer. I mean, James asked, is any sick among you? It ought to be that we have to ask. It shouldn't be that everybody's sick and everybody's broken. Everybody's marriage is messed up. No, there ought to be victory in Jesus. So I'm ministering this. So that the name of the Lord Jesus will be magnified, glorified in you. Another reason why I'm ministering this is because of what it says here in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. The Bible says, and whatever you do, whatsoever you do, which means anything that you do in word or in deed, he says to do it all how? In the name of the Lord Jesus, doing what? Giving thanks to God and the Father through him. So again, the second reason why I'm going back over authority and power is because God's word to us is that any time we, you know, you should open a business in the name of Jesus. Come on, you should get married in the name of Jesus. You should parent your children in the name of Jesus. If you're moving out of state, you should move out of state in the name of... He said, whatever you do, do it all with the authority. He's, in other words, giving you the carte blanche use of his name. Think about it. If you had the authority to use Bill Gates' name in business or at the bank or at the hospital, it should open up door if you were authorized. Come on. You've been authorized to use the name that's above every other name. 
At this name, everything should bow. So that's why we're going over this so that you can understand it. You have the authority to use the name, but the real question, and I'm challenging you to consider as we conclude it, is do you have the power when you use that name? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, to the church of God, which is at Corinth. We are the church of God, which is at Houston. You know, this is Paul writing by the Holy Spirit to you and I. He's writing to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. I've been set apart from the world. There's a difference between me and a worldly person. Why? I've been sanctified. I've been set apart from the world because of Jesus Christ. He's talking to you. He's talking to those who are called to be saints. He's talking to you who with all who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord, both theirs and ours. Notice the Bible is written to those who not just have the name, but use the name. My question is, are you calling on the name of the Lord Jesus when you get a bad doctor's report? Are you calling on the name of the Lord Jesus when you're believing God for a miracle to happen on the inside or on the outside? Amen. Well, you should be calling on the name. Matter of fact, the Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, that's all of us. So he's writing to those that call on the name. But always remember this. Those seven sons of Sceva took it upon themselves to call on the name of the Lord Jesus. But it didn't work. The reason it didn't work is twofold. One, they took it upon themselves, which means they weren't authorized. They weren't believers in Jesus. They were Jewish exorcists. Said nowhere that they have accepted the Lord. They, they called and used the name that Paul was preaching. Not because they believed it, but because it was working for Paul. The second reason why it didn't work is because there was no power in them. They hadn't received the Holy Spirit. Is that you? Are you an individual, although you have the authority to use the name, over sickness and disease? over the diagnosis that the doctor has given you. But you've used that name, but without power. Nothing changed. Nothing happened. I questioned last week, and I'm going to, at the end of this message, stay hooked up and stay connected to what I'm saying, because I'm going to bring about a great clarity at the end of this message. Last week, I questioned the thought, there's power In the name of Jesus. If that is the case in and of itself, then why didn't it work for the sons of Sceva? If there's that kind of power, then all you need to do is say Jesus and it'll work every time. There must be something more to it than that, because all of us have at times used the name of Jesus to no avail and to no effect. I submit to you the reason why that is, is because it's not in the name of alone. You need both authority in the name and you need the power. And I'll show you that clearly. In Luke chapter 9 and verse number 1, talking about authority and power, um, Jesus at one point, he sent out his 12 disciples into the villages. He called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority. He gave them what? Power and authority. He gave them authority, say authority, Authority. and power over all demons and to cure diseases. He gave them authority and power. That's what we're talking about. There's a difference. You need both. Now that you know you've been authorized, the question is, have you received the power? And that's what we're going to look at in the balance of today. This is a new verse of Scripture. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 4, the same way that Jesus gave his disciples temporary power and authority to deal with the devil while he was present. As he was leaving, he said, I'm about to ascend unto my father, but I want you to wait until you receive power. This is the beginning of that discourse in uh, Acts chapter one and verse number four. It says, and being assembled together with them, he's just about to depart. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. 
He commanded them to wait for the promise of the father, which he said, you have heard from me. Understand this, child of God. Jesus talked a lot about the Holy Spirit. Especially the closer it got to him, him leaving the planet. He said, I'm, you know, I wish I could stay here with you, but I can't stay with you. I've got to go back to, to the one who sent me. And they were really sorrowful that he was about to leave. He says, but if I don't leave, then the comforter can't come. But I will pray the Father and he will send you somebody just like me that can live with you, that can walk with you, that can talk with you, that can be your guide and be your help. And he can be in a billion, in billions of places all at the same time. You all have me with you now, but I'm going to leave so that the Holy Spirit can come. Well, write it as he was about to be ascended unto the Father. He commanded them. Somebody say he commanded them. Now, is a command an option? You know, do you get to choose? What's the choice? Obey or disobey, right? Well, notice this. He commanded them to wait for the promise. And he's referring to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just like Jesus commanded them to preach the gospel and to baptize every believer, he also commanded them to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Let me show you. In verse 5. He says, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Let me ask you this question. And I want you to show by a show of hands. And if you haven't, if this is not true, then don't raise your hand. But by a show of hands, how many of you have been baptized in water? Come on, look at this. Hands all over. Amen. You can put your hands down. I mean, hands all over. Why did you get baptized in water? Was it because you felt like it? Was it because you wanted to? Or was it because it was a part of the package? What I've been taught from the word is Jesus said, whosoever believes in me and is baptized shall be saved. What I understand from the word of God is that being baptized in water is not an option. It's a command. You know, for example, you know, you may say, oh, I got saved. Um, what's water baptism? Oh, mm, I can't get my hair wet. Uh-uh. Man, it didn't cost too much for this. I'll opt out on being baptized. Is that OK? No. Not according to the word of God. And we in the church world, we understand that it's a command. But do you also understand that it's a command to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise. He says, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now listen, child of God. You don't have to do anything God commands you to do. God is not pressuring you in this series to get this. The purpose of this series is to get you the power or to at least explain to you why there are successes and failures in your life. Let me submit this to you. One of the difficulties in this message is this. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is always accompanied with speaking in other tongues. Now, he's not going to force you to get this. But if you want to understand why in some situations you can use the name with authority and power and in other situations it doesn't work, it doesn't seem to work so effectively. That you can pray for things in the name of Jesus and the answers doesn't come. And then you can pray for things in the name of Jesus and the answers comes. How many of y'all know he didn't say sometimes if you ask things in my name, he said if you ask anything, come on. Tell me now, if you ask anything in my name, he will do it. It will be done. It shall come to pass. Could it be that you've been asking in his name, but don't have the power? Hallelujah. Give me one second. Who's hot in here? Am I the only one? That's what we get for mid-August in the city of Houston. Amen. Now, he says, for John, now, what's unique about this? Jesus is talking about John. In the book of Acts chapter 19, 
When Paul, having passed through the upper coast at F, came to Ephesus, he found certain guys and they were already saved. The next question, he was like, have you received the Holy Spirit since you've been saved? They were like, we don't even know whether there is a Holy Spirit. He was like, well, wait a minute. Well, what then were you baptized? He said, we were baptized by John unto John's baptism. He said, oh, John baptized people unto repentance, saying that there's coming somebody after him who's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. They got baptized in the name of Jesus and then they got baptized in the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other tongues. What was so significant about what John said that not only did Paul repeat it, but Jesus himself repeated it. He points it out. Jesus said, John baptized people with water, but my job is to baptize people with the Holy Ghost. My question to you, I don't know how long you've been saved, But have you received the Holy Spirit since you've been saved? Now, because of different teaching about speaking in tongues and the Holy Spirit, I actually have to take more time to unlearn some things in you, if you can even unlearn something. Because oftentimes people say, well, I have the Holy Spirit, so yes, I've been baptized. But every time you look in the Bible... To see somebody receiving this experience, it's accompanied with them speaking in tongues. So if you do not speak with tongues, not my opinion, but biblically, you've not been baptized in water. Now listen how quiet it's gotten. The reason is over 50% of us in here right now, we had a full service at the first service at 830 over 50% of the people at the first service are not baptized. With the, I don't even have to ask for a show of hands. It's written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. <laughs> so I want you to listen attentively to the rest of this message. I'm going to show you from the word of God about the power that comes comes through the baptism with the Holy Spirit. He commands them, don't do anything until you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. For John baptized with water and you shall be baptized not many days from now. Verse 8, you will receive power when this happens. When you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are going to receive miracle working ability. You'll be able to speak into the ordinary course of things. You know, the body's not working the way it's supposed to be. You'll be able to speak to that body and command it to work right and all of a sudden it'll work right. Why? Because you've got miracle working ability and it comes when the Holy Spirit has come upon you now here's the issue for those of you that have been saved a while and been in churches that have taught about the Holy Spirit in a way that may not necessarily be right I just drank a little bit of water out of this bottle where's the water that I drank it's in me I just poured a little bit of water on my hand. Where's that water? On me and on the floor up under me, right? Is there a difference being in and being upon? That's a big difference. I'm not asking you, do you have the Holy Spirit? I'm asking you, have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit? And you're not pressured to do this. But at least understand then there will be times that you'll use that name without, a, with, without effect because you've got the authority to use it, but you don't have the power. Because the power comes after you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. You say, well, Pastor, where do you see speaking in tongues? If you approach the word of God like I do, as if it's fresh I'm not talking about being clouded with somebody else. Remember I told you, don't take the word of a preacher. If you can't see this in the word yourself, then don't accept it. And and we've been walking through this slow enough. So again, don't just take it. Well, he's saying that this is that. Let me show you from the word of God where this comes from. Why is it, you know, why is it that the tongues come with the baptism? 
he's been talking to them for months, as it were, about the Holy Spirit, specifically now in Acts chapter one about being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And he says this is about to happen not many days from now. And within 10 days, they were all in one place in one accord. They were in prayer. The Holy Spirit comes upon all of them. And in Acts chapter two and verse four, the Bible says that they all were Filled with this Holy Ghost and that they all began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave the meaning to the mumbling of their mouth. Man, I'm preaching good this morning. This is a precedent. This is a precedent setting event. I cannot change the word of God because I'm uncomfortable with allowing words to come out of my mouth that my mind doesn't understand. Or I can't, I can't change the precedent of the word of God because I'm waiting for a feeling. I'm waiting for the, for the Lord to actually knock me down and fill my mouth with words and, and for it to come out. No, I can't change the word of God based on my experience. It said what it says. It is what it is. And then not only that, we see it not just one time. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And here's the funny thing. I talked with a young man this week. And because I'm so fired up about this, it seems like I'm asking everybody, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe, right? So this guy, I talked to him on a regular basis. I know that he's a believer. He asks me questions. We talk about the word of God constantly, but it just come up in me. And I asked him, I said, hey, have you received the Holy Spirit? He says, well, I spoke in tongues sometimes. I, well, I kind of, well, they told me to say thank you, thank you, thank you real fast. And, you know, I don't know. I, no, I'm not baptized with <laughs> Now, he goes to a very large church in the city. And I ask him, I says, well, does your pastor speak with tongues? Well, I don't know if he does. Well, do they teach on the subject of the Holy Spirit and, 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 and speaking in other tongues? No, they don't. And it's interesting how we have some of the largest churches in the world that don't preach messages like I'm preaching today. So I really feel like I'm way out there on thin ice and y'all are making me feel the heat today. (laughs) When in reality, it's filled with the word of God. He didn't talk to them about anything else. He said, don't do nothing until you get this. My challenge to you is that as you examine, if you've got power in your life, is that you make this an important interest and priority to resolve in your heart and to receive in your life. Hallelujah. What's interesting is in Acts chapter 19, when you look at the contrast between Acts 1 1 and Acts 19, John, he's talking about John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people should believe on him who would come after him. So which he's talking about, John was talking about the baptism with the Holy Ghost. I've already taught you the Bible teaches there's different kinds of baptisms. There's baptism with water. There was the baptism of the repentance. There's baptism in the name of Jesus. There's baptism with the Holy Spirit and there's baptism with fire. Amen. So he's telling them, John talked about a baptism that Jesus would baptize people with. And then sure enough, he had asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed?" So receiving the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit are essentially the same thing. He's asking you, have you been baptized with the Holy Ghost? And of course, they answer the way that they answer at the end of this conversation in a matter of moments. In verse 6, when Paul laid his hands on them, check this out, the Holy Spirit came up because they're already saved, right? He's already living on the inside, right? The Holy Spirit came up and on them and they did what? They spoke with tongues and they were prophesied. Wow. Now, wait a minute. What are we doing? We're establishing precedent. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And again, You're not pressured to get this. You do not have to speak in tongues in order to go to heaven. It doesn't say whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and speak with tongues shall be saved. He doesn't pressure you to get it. But if you want to understand why you use that name and it doesn't work, it could be because you don't have the power because you haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit. My challenge to you is why stop short? 
is your Bible, your God, not my word, it's his word. Go deep. Find out what you don't understand. Look into the word for yourself and find out what does it look like biblically when somebody receives the Holy Spirit or when somebody is baptized. I've shown you two cases now where individuals who were baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that. Now, here's one of the arguments that I've heard. Again, I've been pastoring for a long time and I've been in ministry uh, for like 23 years. One of the things that I've heard is that people say, well, the gift of tongues is for some, but not for all. And so I accept what you're saying, that I understand speaking in tongues is in the Bible, even big churches, you know, they they, they won't deny. I mean, you can't. It's in the Bible, right? You know, now you've got full gospel churches, right? And you can't deny it, but don't relegate it for some and not for others. Why? Because my God is not a respecter of persons. He's not going to give you something that I'm not qualified for. He's not going to do in your life something that he won't do in my life if I do the same thing. And besides that, in these occasions, in the, in the precedent, in Acts chapter 1, there was 120 men and women. That were all in that upper room when the Holy Spirit came in and they all spoke with tongues. That means it's for every believer. When Paul found those guys in Ephesus, in Ephesus, he found out that they were saved. He said, Did you, have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit? And they were like, we haven't heard of him. Of course, in verse seven, it said there was 12 men that he was talking to. Every single one of them in Acts chapter 19, verse six, spoke with tongues. So this is something for everybody leaves out nobody. It's not a gift of tongues that God gives to some and not to others. Amen. And again, if you have trouble with that, text me, call me, reach out. Let's look at the script. Let's see what scriptures you use. Well, I don't really know where it is. You are basing your believing on somebody who doesn't even speak with tongues, teaching you about speaking in tongues. I've been speaking in tongues since I was 13 years old, and I just celebrated a birthday yesterday. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but it's been quite a few years since 13. (laughs) Not saying I know all that there is to know about it, but I do it daily, and I pursue God. Amen. Let's talk. Let's look at your scriptures. Amen. Can I give you one last before we go? In Acts chapter 8, this ought to settle it for you. God wants every believer to be baptized with the Holy Spirit so that they can have the ability to intervene in their life and in other lives with miracles. The Bible says, and we'll read the whole chapter this week, but the Bible says that then Philip, who was also a man full of the Holy Spirit, Philip was a man who spoke with tongues. Anyway, he went down to a city of Samaria. He was preaching Christ unto them. I want you to imagine this guy going into a certain city. He's preaching about Jesus. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. And obviously he's preaching to people that haven't believed on Jesus. Excuse me. Yeah. Haven't believed on Jesus yet. And he said, and when they believed as uh, Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of the G- and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women, they were what? Baptized. What is he talking about? He went down there preaching about Jesus. He took up a series called the kingdom of God. That's a good series title. He did a series on the kingdom of God and they believed him. Then he did a series on the name of Jesus Christ. He said that in John 14, you could use this name for whatever. Those people believed on Jesus' teachings. And as a result, again, you go into all the world, you preach the gospel. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved, right? So what did he do? Baptism service. If you want to sign up for water baptism, just text the number. Text the word water. To, come on, somebody. Well, they didn't have text message back then but they signed up for baptisms and those people were baptized with water but is that enough no because in Acts chapter 8 and verse 14 when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God they sent Peter and John unto them why who when they had come down they prayed for them why So that they might receive the Holy Spirit. I'm asking you. Have you received the Holy Spirit? I'm not talking about him living in you because you're saved. I'm talking about him coming upon you because Jesus baptized you. 
with the Holy Ghost. How do you how do I know if I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost? Do you speak with tongues? No. Well, you haven't been endowed with power. But that's okay. Because you qualify. Well, I got some things in my life that I've been doing that I'm not too proud about. I got some addictions. I'm still smoking. I'm still drinking. I'm still running around. And I just know that I ain't worthy. I ain't worthy for the Holy Spirit to come upon my life. You might feel you're not worthy because of what you do. You're worthy because of who he is. And I can tell you the reason why you're still smoking, you're still drinking, you're still running around, and you're still falling into sin, and you're still unsuccessful on the job, and you're still in, in, you know, inefficient in this, is because you don't have the power to get him off of you. After you get saved, the first thing you need is not to clean your life up. The first thing that you need is to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when you tell the devil no in the name of Jesus, no means no. When you tell him to get back, get back means get back. And to get off of you, it means get off of you. My question is, have you received the... This thing was so serious that when, when Jerusalem heard that the people got saved, they were like, well, did they get filled with the Holy Ghost? Did the Holy Spirit, did they, did, did, how do you know if the Holy, can you see the Holy Spirit with your eyes? No. The way you know somebody's baptized with the Holy Ghost is they speak with tongues. They do what we did when it first happened to us, when it had never happened to anybody else. You start speaking in tongues. Oh, yeah, he's got it. Yeah. How do you know? Because he's talking in tongues. It's evidenced by what's happening on the outside. They were like, no, they ain't get it. (laughs) Well, we can't leave them like that. Who can go for us? Peter said, I'll go. (laughs) I like the Holy Spirit. John said, I'll go with you, man. I like to go in prayer. They came down from Jerusalem to Samaria. He said, hey, we're going to have a meeting. We got Apostle Peter and we got Apostle John. They came out. They began to preach to them that John baptized you with water. Anybody here been baptized with water? They were like, yeah. Well, Jesus is one who's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And for he had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had been only baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They started speaking in tongues close with this verse 16 the question is got power have you only been baptized in water if you have there's another baptism by which you need to be baptized with and that's the baptism of the holy spirit stand up on your feet now i've gone way over time I went way over time at the 830 service, and I'm like, wait, you didn't even know I'm like 15 minutes over time, right? But, but because this message is right where you are, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, because this is a personal matter. No, you don't know. I don't come out here and speak in tongues on the platform, because I respect what the Word says about people who come in that aren't saved. If everybody here was saved, there should be no problem with you if I speak in tongues. But for the sake of the unlearned, those that aren't saved, I don't do it on the platform in a way that would scare them or alarm them. It shouldn't scare you. It's in your word. I understand this is a personal matter between you and the Lord. But don't let it pass you by. I'm concluding the series today. Don't miss this opportunity. You're not pressured to do this. But if you want to understand why you've used that name and it doesn't work or sometimes it does, I'll close with this. In Ephesians chapter 3, I questioned whether there's power in the name of Jesus. I did it humbly and by inspiration of the Lord. But a greater clarity came to my heart that confirms that not in and of itself There's not power in the name in and of itself. Movie stars use the name of Jesus on television in vain. People that aren't even saved use the name of Jesus. If there was power, it could be like a magical word. Did you say Jesus and everything stopped, right? But it doesn't work like that. 
the Lord took me to Ephesians 3 and 20 and just kind of like, I can't say blew my mind because I still got it. The Bible says now unto him, talking about God, who is able to do, how many of y'all, God's got the ability to move mountain. He made the mountain. God created the heaven and the earth. His ability to get to you the money that you need by the end of this week cannot be questioned. But notice this verse doesn't talk about God's ability. He says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the miracle work and ability that works in you. What am I saying? There is power in the name of Jesus, but not by itself. The power in the name of Jesus comes from the person who is authorized to use the name, not from the name itself. Let me say that again, and please hold on because you got to get this. You've been using that name and it hasn't been working. Why? Because God's ability to move in your life is not based on his ability. It's based on the ability that's working on the inside of you. Ah, you still didn't get it. About five people got it. So I'll say it a different way until you get it. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. But his ability is according to the miracle. The word power here is dunamis. Miracle working ability. His ability is according to the miracle working ability that's working in you. Hallelujah. The question is, what kind of power is working in you? The power that's in the name comes from the person that's authorized to use the name. You've used the name without power. Now it's time to learn how to use the name with the power. Amen? Amen. We've already prayed for our sins and and anybody that gave their life to the Lord. I said to you that I'm concluding the series, and I am, for packaging purposes. Next week, I'm going to begin a brand new series that teaches you how to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I can't leave you in this place. Where you're not baptized, you're not speaking in tongues, and you don't know how. Okay? So next week, if you're interested, I'm going to start a brand new series on Sunday so that you can learn how to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The title of the series is Ask, Receive, Speak. It's one of the simplest things that you'll ever do in your Christian walk. Amen? I mean, was it hard to be saved? No. And it won't be hard for you to be baptized. I really sense the Spirit of God in this place today. And I just want to conclude with a word of prayer. If you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, 